Design Salvation, Episode 11. This is Design Salvation, your lifeline to better design with Dixie and Annie. Our mission is to share our conversation with you so we can all elevate our work and lifestyle. Welcome to The Fold. Hey, y'all, it's Dixie Stark. And hi, it's Annie Lundquist. And this is Design Salvation. We have Lucy with us today. Hey, everyone. (laughs) (laughs) It's going to be a fun time today. We're going to talk through some questions that Lucy's going to uh, have for us. And then we're just going to talk about all good, fun things that are designed that we like and we're enjoying right now. And sounds great. Just sounds really good. Mm -hmm. Sounds really good to me. It does to me, too. Right. And last week, yes, I think you asked me if I was reading anything. I did, and you totally, like, went <laughs> flat. What and nothing. Heck? I said I was just watching TV. So, but this week, I have a great book. Oh, do tell. Yeah, do tell. Okay, yeah. I want to know. So, I got a new garden book. Oh, here she goes with I the know. garden book. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. But okay. this one's really inspiring. It's okay. It's by Scott Schrader. Who How'd is- you find out about it? Well, Amazon helped me out. You know, okay, they well, throw those things helps. up like, you'll like this book or whatever. Sure enough. Yeah. Amazon, uh-huh. it's like you have a random thought and then they give you an ad for the same thing. It's so true. Mm-hmm. They're in my head. Yeah, they got your Yeah, they got your number. Yeah. So this one, Scott Schrader, he's okay. the landscape designer in California primarily. I mean, obviously he works all over, but. So he's based out of LA, you think? No, like, like Santa Monica or something. Oh, okay, I think cool. That's where he has a beautiful home. And he is the most incredible garden. And, of course, it's California plant material and stuff. So we can't all do that. No. But the book is gorgeous and inspiring, and it's more about the the spaces that he creates for outdoor living. In fact, I think it's called called The Art of Outdoor Living. Oh, there you go. Gardens for Entertaining Family and Friends. Uh, So he has all these different rooms outside. That he does outside. Yeah, it's awesome. So it's a good coffee table book, too? I, I think guess. it's a great coffee table book. Oh, okay. I think it's great to inspire. It, it's changed my thinking about gardens a little bit already. Already? I'm barely dug in. Yep. I'm going to make some changes. Can't okay. wait. Hey. Mm-hmm. And there's not a lot of color. So if you like big flowery books, this is not for you. Okay. It's mostly it's a green garden. Green gardens. Which is kind of what you preach and what I I preach anyway. I do. I do. Yeah, Yeah, we do. Mm Because color in the garden is a commitment. We've talked about how that can be a problem a little Mm -hmm. bit later down the road or what have you. Okay, we're drinking a special drink today. I'm so impressed. You, I am, I am the cocktail queen. I think I can be dubbed the cocktail queen. We could go toe to toe on that. Thank you, lovey. Dixie, you're also good. Oh. We're both good. We're both good. Okay. Both favorites. Why do you? Well, because Okay, so let's what? just say today we're having a margarita swirl. I don't like margaritas, by the way. Ugh. But this swirl is swirl, the bomb. It's the bomb. <laughs> it's, a, it's a sangria I knew it. swirl. I knew it. it. Does everyone know that already? <laughs> Am I the only person that doesn't know what a margarita swirl is? Mm. Maybe. No, girl, you have oh. to kind of know the Texas thing. I mean, oh. like Lula knows because she's from, you know, the Fort she Worth TCU crowd. Hang on. Oh, sorry. She okay. is from <laughs> so Seattle. she's not from there. She is actually going I'm just to school there. there right now. But you know, you know the, yes. whole, the whole like slushy mm. thing was invented in Dallas. And of course, you know, I have this affinity for Dallas because I lived there forever and I met Jay there and blah, 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 blah. But, um, well, yes, no, I, well, I, think, I, I believe that because I remember when we were down for a horse show yeah. in Waco or something a few years ago, they had a daiquiri drive <gasps> through. Oh, you drove through. <gasps> yeah, that gets me so oh excited. Gosh, why am I blanking on the name? Was I that Waco that. or was daiquiri that? Daiquiri Express. Daiquiri Probably. Express. Is that uh-huh. hilarious? No, I don't know the Daiquiri wrong, Express, but, but I okay. I will say we used to go to Uncle Julio's and that's where I used to. <laughs> oh my gosh, yes, we have one. Thank you. Work. Thank oh, you, Uncle Julio's in Dallas. And that's where I learned about the swirl. Well, then I oh. went to Me Casino, which is in Highland Park. Me go. Uh-huh. So good. I know. And then they have the Mambo Taxi, which is the swirl, and it's huge. And Mambo you walk taxi. out of there and that's you're like, Dallas. Hello. How do you know, Lulu? Because she just me. knows. Somebody <laughs> told her. Someone told me about it. They're so delicious. Good, good answer. But you're trying to give me a run for the money, so let's talk okay. about that. So I did do what? a great cocktail the other a couple of days ago. We were up in Roach Harbor on my dad's boat. With nice. My dad and his wife's boat. That's I shouldn't so say. It really, well, it's my dad's baby. 
I think it's, it's okay to say that. And exclude Gaga. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> anyway, I was tasked with making Mai Tais because they couldn't find Mai Tai mix. And I don't well, like you don't like the mix. I don't any, like you mix don't any. like any of the mixes. No. It turned out better. It turned out great. They they thought it was a huge improvement on the mix. So it was nice pineapple job. juice, coconut juice, or kind of a squeezy thing. It's thicker than that. And then you stir it all up, and then you put no. the black. No. What? The pineapple spear? No, the dark rum. Oh. Ooh. Yeah. I was going to say it's black not rum. Black See, rum. I don't know my booze very well. <laughs> it's dark rum. <laughs> it's dark rum. I'm sorry. That's brilliant. Oh, okay, God. the black rum, not yeah. the dark rum. <laughs> Whatever. Okay. You put the dark rum in it, a bunch of lime, and then I added lime Perrier because I don't want it to be too sweet. That pineapple. I don't like being too pineapple sweet. juice that's concentrated. Uh, uh, uh. I agree with you. I think putting in the the Perrier is a good call. Yeah. And, and then, then you did the pineapple spear in the mint, and the mint. So it was pretty. It was pretty and a big fat spear. Did you really take a pineapple. picture? No. <gasps> well, because we well, were in it was red, really classy in a red silk. Yeah, it was red silk. Oh well, you know what? We you're going to make those here, but you're going to post. We're going to post oh, in the show notes. Okay. We're going to post your recipe. Okay. Because since you have perfected this. Mm-hmm. I mean, mm-hmm. I have a, you know, mine is, again, based on sangria, which happens to be left over from last week. It's so, fabulous. you know, sangria can stay in your fridge for a while. So, anyways, that's the thing. But we were blessed right before we went on the air with what? The popcorn. Oh, we have a little Okay, list. I haven't tried it yet. Okay, you go for it. Except it's kind of like rude because we're munching it, did on you just, air. It came in the box. Did from what? Amazon, right? Five, five minutes ago. Oh, yeah. Ago. It came in a big old box. <laughs> she gets it. Amazon supporters. <laughs> but she gets it by the... I get it by the bulk. Bulk. Oh, yeah. And the reason I get it by the bulk is I get the uh, little... It's, um, it's, it's good. It's so buttery. I know. Oh, and, and it's not oh. only... Mm-hmm. It's called Himalayan Gold. And it's I the Buddha Bowl, lesser evil Buddha Bowl. Anyways, I love to get the small packages because I could throw those in my car. And when I'm just feeling mm-hmm. like mm-hmm. I'm famished mm-hmm. or I just need a munchie, but I don't want to go get a big old bar of chocolate, <laughs> which is what I normally opt for, <laughs> then I, <laughs> I'll, I'll do the this healthy Himalayan too. salt, you know, on the yeah. popcorn. But it is, it's pretty tasty. Bella I, is just sitting at my feet wanting some popcorn. Because she she's knows. on a diet. She knows. Oh, yeah. The, the boo. Oh, no, she's oh the boo. She's on a diet. Okay, mm-hmm. should we do design or should we just, yeah. Okay, let's talk, design. let's talk design. Don't we have questions today that Lulu's going to give us? Mm-hmm. Mm. Oh. Yeah. Prompt yeah, us, but her please. mouth's full of popcorn. I right know. Now. I couldn't stop eating That's it. all right. Oh, and then at some point I have a design crush I need to talk about. Mm. But we'll go there later. We'll do okay, questions we'll go there first. Okay. Let's do questions okay. first. This is a question from Jenny. She asks... What can clients do to make your work more fun or smooth? Be fun. Oh, that's a great answer. Uh, it's just like our. Mm-hmm. It's just like our motto. What is it? Uh, we're not funny, but we're fun. We're fun. Yeah. Yeah. No, I mean, there's lots of things clients can do. Right, let's be. Let's I be serious. I think that is nice to bring good energy. Absolutely. Because it enjoy can be the a process, slog, and you should come in easy and happy because it's a luxury. It is. It's mm-hmm. a luxury to have a designer, and I think you should enjoy the process and enjoy it collectively. But at the same time, there are things that clients can do that will make the process so much easier. And part mm-hmm. of it is respect. Show up for the appointments on time. Mm-hmm. Pay your bills on time. That's that's lovely thing. That do goes a your long homework. Way. Mm-hmm. Like if you are asked to go and look at something in particular. Maybe it's going to sit in a chair or maybe it's going to look at a piece of stone to approve or looking at something in your own house or grabbing a scarf because that's our color scheme. Do it. Mm-hmm. You know, like do your hold, homework. It's it's like a, a relationship. Just just do your part. Do your part mm-hmm. and enjoy the process and have fun. Respect each other. And bring your energy into it. Like, make it yours. And I think that is all we can ever ask. And I honesty. Think so. I think honesty and communication is key. I am fine with a client saying, I hate that, I hate that, I hate me that. Me too. I prefer if they say, that's not for me. Because I don't bring anything to the table that's ugly. You I might just either. not get it. Exactly. It might not be yes. your your stick or your vibe or right. whatever, but but you're right. They so might I like not it just... better when they say, no, that's not for me. That's not for me. Rather than I've shown Fortuny to clients and they say, that's hideous. Fortuny? Like, okay, that's impossible. That's impossible that that would be f- 
hideous. There's, yeah. yeah. And you know what? I think, again, that's kind of a respect thing where it's like there are mm-hmm. tactful and nice ways to say yeah. things. Although I will say I'm not, you know, at the end of the day, their money, their job, you know, their project, not job, but they have to live with it. I don't. I'm trying not to get too attached to yes, it from that totally. perspective. And so it's like, be honest. Right. You know? they, can, they can cut to the chase. But have fun for crying right. out loud. I if think that that's really good advice. If that means drinking a margarita or if that means, <laughs> you know, wearing a crazy T-shirt or, you know, coming to the table with something that you bought on your own that you're just like, I'm mad for this. I love it so much. We have to use it. Just bring your energy. I think that's really key. That's excellent. I hadn't thought about it like Bring your like energy that. because mm-hmm. your energy is what we will actually – work off of. Mm-hmm. And it's your house at the end of the day. It's yeah. not mine. I don't have to live there. I don't have okay, to Okay. So here's the question. Okay. You are presenting and you, you've got your energy and the couple's arguing. <laughs> <laughs> this has happened so often. Doesn't it? Mm-hmm. I mean, and it they're is- arguing as if you're not in the room. Oh, I know. Okay, what is that? I don't know. Why did they do? Why did they just like, blah, 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 and they're just going at it like you're not even there? I have been in meetings. I'm not oh, kidding you, Annie. Honey, I've thrown things. Too. Yeah, I have one stomping off, chasing them through a framed in house during a meeting, trying to find. I mean, them oh and my gosh, saying okay, they're going to take is, their lives if something's painted black. And, that is a what not to do. So don't do that if you're trying to make it more fun and and more enjoyable process for the designer. Please don't do that. Do that under, you know, your own. No, pretend like you're in public doors. arguing, not in your but bedroom you know, arguing. When they are, it's really hard to know how to manage that. And, and as a designer, sometimes you're kind of like, hmm, because you have to know their personality too. But I will tell you, there has been more than one job that they have started arguing, and I've walked away. Oh. I've just let them go at it, and I've That's disappeared. That's a good solution, too. Yeah. And like, one of which, mm-hmm. I got in my car and left mm-hmm, mm-hmm. because I was like, I, don't I, can't, that. I can't solve any problems here yeah. today, and they are so into themselves and what <laughs> they're arguing about. But most of the time, I walk away, let them kind of hash it out, and then I come back around and, you know. Sometimes I go out to my car and I grab something or I act like I am or something so that the, the yeah. you know, you, just the dust you can and settle. Jay argue about, because your husband has a viewpoint. Very definite taste. But you also seem pretty, like you can work around it. Yeah. Pretty, you're, you know, on the, you're on the same side of the playing field. But yeah. what do you do when you do disagree? Uh, you know, it's it's just like any like, you know, relationship or married couple or anything like that. Uh, I I usually let it lie. You know, I just, I, I don't try to push the envelope. Mm-hmm. Uh, but, you know, at the end of the day, for me, I get to see a lot of great things. I get to work on a lot of great things. And so most of the time I end up coming to a pretty good compromise that leans more towards his direction than mine. It's it's kind of in- so sweet. It's kind of interesting because you that, feel like, like he needs the creative outlet, he, and you have it does. every day. He works in an office that's pretty sterile. Mm-hmm. That he doesn't really have a space that can be his own because that's the new model in all these corporate yeah. places. Oh, no. oh my gosh, my husband open works place. that way too. Open concept, oh, crazy open concept, and they they actually hate it if they're about mm-hmm. our age or older. They yep. especially hate it. I don't think and so I would we like it either. You don't like it. You don't what have, if you were on the phone with someone. Oh no, to go, you, have you have to go to, go to, to a those, pod yeah, or a conference room. Mm-hmm. It's hassle. crazy pants. Well, they're doing that so that people feel more interactive, I guess, and I think they're doing it also because. There's they're a lot of rotation money. and change oh, in no. money. It's a business model. And it's they're money. saving money because they don't need as many private offices. Yeah, they don't have to have all the mm-hmm. cubes and all that. So anyways, I, I in the back of my mind, I'm like, you know, he's, he's not in a space. I mean, most of the week, mm-hmm. he's not in a space that is his own or creative or you know, anything that speaks to him. So I'm like, ah, That's still whatever. very generous of you. However, whatever. I will but he say has he really has great a taste. phenomenal point of view. Yeah, he's extraordinary. Mm-hmm. I can barely give my husband the chair he wants. You <laughs> <laughs> can't, right? Okay, no. now why is that? He, he can't really buy you gifts either. No, I tell him what to buy me, but that's, do? that's typical oh. of a lot of why. Oh, yes, I tell him. He's happy to make me happy. Oh, no. Jay Jay has got me down to a T. That's so he nice. He makes me cooler. 
He makes you cooler. Oh, oh yeah. My husband he, doesn't. I love no, my husband. No, he so, so much. makes me cooler. Make me Jay cooler. makes me way cooler. No, he buys her the coolest jewelry. I oh, know. Yeah. He does. It's true. My Louis Vuitton bag, he bought. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. You know, my ceramic white ring, he bought. Mm, I love that My ring. Tiffany, you know, uh, Frank Gehry he ring. Makes you architectural. Cooler. That's great. Well, yeah. my husband makes me a better person. See, well, Jay always does that yes, too, of but course. he really makes saying. me cooler. I'm not kidding. He's very. He's chic. edgy. Yeah, he is. Well, he's edgy. from New York. Oh, well, not really technically, but he's from mm-hmm. New York, so he's been exposed. He worked at Tiffany's. Don't you love that? Yeah, I didn't know that. <laughs> <laughs> he worked at Tiffany's two years in marketing in the summer. Uh-uh, uh-uh. In college. Oh. And he had his best friend with him. They would stay in New York, and they would live off of, like, beer and hot dogs off the street. And they worked in Tiffany's. He worked in, um, I think, the semi-precious stones or something. Ooh. He sold stuff to the okay, stars. Okay, so he know His eye's been trained. Oh, I he gotcha. is so he's Plus, trained. he's an artist. But he's an artist. He can he draw. saw his drawings. So I was blown away. He so can. Was he wanted to be a cartoon He did artist. want to be a cartoon artist. That's so cool. And he's, he's capable. And he's capable. Completely. He just chose to go, you know, into marketing. But anyways, enough about my sweet husband. Okay. okay. Here's the next question. Okay. This is from Jan. Okay. If you have a project out of state, do you have a designer locally in your home state or in your destination? That's a really good question. Ooh. What's your answer, Annie? Um, My answer isn't as informed probably as yours because I've – almost primarily worked in state. I've done a lot of consulting out of state and a little farther away where I don't, I'm not, I don't visit very often, sort of yeah. just, you know, because a couple hours away or whatever. But I don't think you have to have a designer in state unless if you're doing new construction, I would say it's a little trickier with new, new construction if I do. if you don't trust your architect implicitly to make those day-to-day decisions and you don't know that your builder can Fill in the gaps because they're always, always are always some. design. Yeah, from a designer standpoint, I think you can do it if your communication's really good and you you're gonna have to FaceTime and you're gonna have to fly in here and there. Oh, but yeah. yeah, you can definitely do it. You know, I would say a couple of things. If you already have a designer that you've worked with that is local to you. There is a lot of time that actually can be uh, cut down by already knowing that designer, having a relationship with them, and already, like, you don't have any of this mm-hmm. this kind of, like, Get to know courting, each other, get in their kind, brain. Exactly. You're not courting each other, and you're trying to get to know. This person already knows you, and because they're accessible to you locally, it might be in your best interest. What you do have to know is that, yeah, you've saved money and time on the front end, but you will potentially have to have that person travel to whatever the destination is. Mm-hmm. On the flip side, having someone at the location, just like you mentioned, is also a benefit. But what happens a lot of times that I have seen is that that courting time where you're trying to get to know one another and they're trying to understand your aesthetic and all those sorts of things, that takes longer. Mm-hmm. So it's really a wash and I think you go with what you're most yeah, comfortable Yeah, because if you with. fall in love with your designer and you know it's a fit, Use I wouldn't give that up. Use them. Don't give it up. Because otherwise, you're really putting yourself in financial, I wouldn't say peril, but you could hook up with the wrong designer that's not a good fit, and then you've got to backtrack. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. And someone that you, it's like anything in business or even in life. When you have a relationship with someone, gosh, it's a lot different. Mm-hmm. You know, when there's an established history and there. You trust. And, and trust. That's such a huge part of design. You know, that previous trust. question about how to get along with your designer, make it smoother for them. Yes. Make it more fun. If Not funny, but You have fun. a qualified designer that you've got chemistry with, really trusting them is going to get you the best results. Absolutely. And not questioning if you feel a little bit out of your comfort zone, that might be a good place to be. Sure. For a great result. Sure. Because we've talked about having the interesting thing in the room that's a conversation starter or, I mean, maybe not that dramatic, but that takes your designer probably pushing you a little bit. It does. Almost almost all of the time it mm-hmm. does. It's, you know, it's it's just one of those things that designers can bring to, to your project and to the table. So 
I don't know if that really answers it completely thorough, but I think, I think so. a lot of that's I intuitive. Think that's pretty good. I think that's, yeah, follow intuitive. your gut. Mm-hmm. Follow your gut. And I think it depends on who you are. If you want to be super hands-on and involved in every single step, you might want someone closer to you. Mm-hmm. Well said. Yeah, that's a good point. But well said. If, you want, if you're willing just to trust your designer. Mm-hmm. Right, you know, and or architect or team, then yeah. the further away is further fine. Further away is fine. Mm-hmm. I think it depends on who you are as a person. Yes, okay, I agree. Okay, so you're putting together a little house with well, your... I have a question. You, oh, you I do. thought so. Yeah, okay, let's so. talk. What's your question? question? So, I'm moving into a house in a couple of weeks with my friends at TCU, and I obviously want my room to be cute because... You're a designer. Because I'm a designer. Right. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> One day. One day. I'm working You're getting on. there. Okay, but I wish I could do wallpaper, and I know there's a lot of adhesive wallpapers out there. Should I try one? Dixie? I think so. So, this is kind of funny. I was at the Lowe's, and I was Lowe's actually- Lowe's is- yeah. Lowe's, like Home Depot? Yeah. yeah Lowe's is the actually- Lowe's. You know- See, that's so Southern. I was at the Lowe's. I was at the Lowe's. So but, southern. you know, Lowe's is actually a Southern thing. Yeah. It's oh. more- I think, wait, I think Lowe's is more- more southern than Home Depot. Southern than northern. Home Depot, but I thought Home Depot was Texas. But anyways, I whatever. I was there because I had to pick up some little wood screws, and I'm like tootling around. They have, you know, what is his name? Jonathan and oh, Andrew. What's his name? Uh, it's Who's the Scott this? Brothers. Oh, on the on property, property Brothers. Property, property Brothers. 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 Yeah. But they're the. I think their last name's Scott. Anyways, twins, they've, right? they've got this yes. line called Scott Living. And uh, it's adhesive wall covering. And you mm. could actually get it there if you just want to buy it, like, up and off the shelf. Yeah. And they had some kind of marbleized-looking stuff that's cool. They had mm-hmm. some uh, – it's adhesive, of course, right. but it's a Does it woven actually grass look cloth. Good? But do what? Does it really look good? Okay. So, yes. Okay. Let me tell you. Mm-hmm. I have a confession. Confession. Big confession. Tell Sister Annie. <laughs> I actually use the adhesive wall covering in my laundry room. From Lowe's? Not from Lowe's. No, no, no. I got it online. <laughs> okay. But I I am so not crafty. Like, ugh, I want to be crafty, not but either. I'm not. No, none of us are crafty. But I was able to install this myself. And the reason I did that is because I kept thinking my laundry room needs something. And my laundry room is the size of a closet. You know, yeah, it's, it's tiny. It's a stackable washer dryer. It's just me and Jay. No big deal couple of dogs. We don't need that much. And so what I did is I bought this online and it's a, it's a map. It's super cool. And I put that up and it looks fantastic. Okay. That does not look like adhesive. It's adhesive, girl. You didn't know I fooled uh-uh, you. <laughs> I know. It's chic. It's good. <laughs> mm-hmm. So anyway, so the nice thing about it is if you're in a rentable property right. or you're in a property that you're going to have to paint it back after you do, you know, whatever you mm-hmm. do to it. I so advise that he's a bull. Can you really covering. peel it off? Literally it peel it off. Come. You can do, you can put it up mm-hmm. and then if it doesn't look good or it's cut wrong or whatever, you just take that thing down. You just on it again. So it doesn't take the paint and the wall board nothing. off. Nothing. It takes okay. nothing. Okay. So the try best that. thing to do is to yet. actually, you know, you put it up and I usually start, you know, either in one corner because mm-hmm. I have a straight edge sure. and go wall to wall. Or I'll start in the dead center, depending on the size right. and spread out from there. It's kind of like laying tile or yes, doing exactly. carpet or whatever. You pick your seams. You mm-hmm. pick where you're going to put your yeah, seams. I can but if you have totally a really, yeah, exactly. Pick your seams. <laughs> pick my uh, seams. Pick your battles. Pick your seams. Uh, <laughs> <but> it, <laughs> I know we're no designer humor. Yeah, so there you go. I, mean, I don't know. We're we're going down a yeah. rabbit hole. But if you have a really good exacto, do not get a shabby exacto. Get a really sharp one, brand yeah, I new. Yeah, have one. I have and one. go to town. Hmm. Okay, I'm that'll be fun. It. I'll go help to you. town. I'll, I'll help, help you. Help me. Yep. Okay, I'm that's flying down. Up. We're doing it. They're driving down. I'm flying in. Who's they? Um, my brother and I are <gasps> driving. Solid road trip. Three days. Total road trip. I know. I'm actually kind of excited. You are? I haven't. Well, is yeah, he I excited? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, he actually is. Oh. I know. He's a trooper. Now, mm-hmm. wait. Are y'all going to drive right through or are you going to stop and do some fun stuff? I think we're just going to drive through. I just want to get there. 
Mm, and you're anxious to get back to school. I'm anxious to get back to school. And we looked at making some stops, and it's just too far off the path. Mm-hmm. I'm not trying to add more time to 30 hours. She yeah, wants to. And then let's he be clear, she wants back? to see her girlfriends. Yeah, we're flying back together. Oh, and wait. I have him for another couple of no. weeks. My brother and I are driving. Okay. Down. My mom's flying in. Okay. And then my mom and my brother are flying home. Oh, excellent. Yeah. Nice. I don't really need to go help, but yeah, I've you helped do. the last two years. We've had such a good time. It's been so fun. And then I don't see you for so long anyway. So. I know. You I need to go. You would yeah, have FOMO. I need to go. It's a send off. I have FOMO. But I you know have what FOMO. that means. The time is drawing near. <gasps> Yeah, Dixie won't have you. How many more working days do you have Two. together? Two. Two. That's okay. not enough. Basically like one and a half. That's rude. We are yeah. so grateful. Well, we had to cut it short because I have to give my silly wisdom teeth out. But we, Dixie. But, yeah. Oh, that's. Uh, we're so just, grateful for your ah, this opportunity. Ah, she learned so much. The best ah, you know it what? It really has. Y'all, Lucy rocked it. Last oh. week. We didn't really? talk about was that. Was it last week or this week? Because you let her it do a presentation. Last week. It was yes. this week. So. It was so scary. I didn't expect it. I wasn't nervous until I got there and then I started sweating. <laughs> well, well Dixie, the reason, you didn't give her any warning. No. And the reason why I didn't give her any warning, and I may go down a serious rabbit hole here for a second. I didn't give her any warning because I didn't want you to be nervous, and I didn't want you to do something you normally wouldn't do. Mm -hmm. And so I wanted to also watch your natural presentation style. And Mm -hmm. I've, I've, you know, it's funny. Everybody presents differently, and I just wanted to see what was natural to you. Yeah. And the way that Lulu presents. What was natural to me. Well, the way she presents is she takes each material and puts it in front of the client. Mm-hmm. And each material goes in front of the client, and she, you know, you mean does individually? She doesn't create individually, a whole individually sketch, uh-huh. uh-huh. As opposed to other ways to do it, and there is no right or wrong way. It's it's stylistic, and oh. I wanted to see what your style was, uh-huh. and so that's why I did not give you a heads up that you would be presenting. Uh-huh. Clever, girl. and then that way I could show you the other two styles instead of coaching you in advance mm-hmm. on how to do it. If I'd have coached you in advance, you would have really been nervous. Yeah, I probably and would have overthought exactly, it. Exactly, you would have overthought it. Mm-hmm. And in this case, you had done the research. We had hashed through it. Mm-hmm. You had gone back and done additional research. You knew the project inside and out. So I didn't want to influence you. I wanted to see what you were going to do and then follow up with you. Uh, so, okay. Yeah. Well, she's such she a deliberate it. mentor. She rocked it. No, she's such a good teacher. Mm-hmm. No, I'm not kidding. <laughs> this is because I'm a Thank terrible you. teacher. Thank it's you. not true, Mom. It is. It's okay. No, you're a different kind of teacher. I'm a Everybody's learning. different. And you're, that's why it's more good. Of like, Look and observe, teacher, mm-hmm. and she's she's a teacher, send teacher. me in a direction, mm-hmm. kind of. She has like a, it, her parents like, are I get educators. Curriculum from Dixie, and then <laughs> <laughs> the feel and the eye from me. The feel and the eye. Uh, yeah, but you Dixie. know what is so interesting is that everybody has a different way of of mentoring and teaching, and and the thing is, is that's why it's so important. When you're a young designer, when you're training to be a designer, to get multiple perspectives. Absolutely. Because not every one of them is going to be your style or no. your vibe. And you take a little bit from everybody and make it your own. Exactly. And that's what I've learned just having different sports c- coaches yeah. throughout the years oh, as well. Oh, true. You take what works for you. Yes. And you leave what doesn't, but you still hear the, another perspective and it's Absolutely. the same in design. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. And sometimes it's just confirmation. Yeah. Sometimes you hear something and you go... Yeah, I've been doing that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm doing that right, mm-hmm. and it's it's just it's just the confirmation that you're on, on the, the right back. path. Uh-huh. Or absolutely. Well, and this is why we need designer friends too, because oh, you might come in, tell your saga like I did today about a difficult meeting, and Dixie, Which you were so have. helpful because you said that's not okay. <laughs> I want you to toughen up, <laughs> and I want you to approach it this way. No, I said, put your big girl pants put my, on. Okay, okay. Put my, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, true. Here's my confession. I'm always confessing. No. Yeah, I, I am. Like it's okay. My confession, I am too nice. You are too nice. I am. I always want to be nice to the point where it doesn't really solve the issues at hand. They just keep going because I'm not putting my foot down and— 
I, I've mm-hmm. gotten to the point where I might not be nice anymore at all. <laughs> I mean, no, I'm serious. Yeah, I'm you're like, just mm-hmm. so mean. Yeah, no. <laughs> but I'm like, there are times when I'm like, boy, I'm not nice anymore. I used to be nice, but I'm not nice anymore. But but you know, it works and it's efficient. And there's a sense that if it's so disruptive mm-hmm. to your mental health and your business, you're not and your business as a Gosh. as a sort of repercussion. Cut the cord. Yeah, it's not. Going well. Yeah, and so exactly. I, I and it's, you know, what's a win-win. It's kind of like when somebody loses uh, just a, their job or they change their occupation and they think, oh, it's so catastrophic at the time. And then you're like, no, that was the best thing That's that could the best have ever happened. Absolutely. Yeah, it was the best thing ever. So, no, wait, you were going to tell me before we got on the air about your we talk about these design crushes all the time, but you have oh, yeah. a stylist okay. crush. And I, I, do. I don't know who this is, so I need to well, know who this is because you're always telling me about these new people. I, know, I don't know how you don't know her, but— Well, I might know her, and then yeah, I just haven't so, paid cause attention because you she's know how got I am. a vibe that you could work with. And oh, her yeah? name's Jill Sharp. And most of oh, you I who— Jill. Are, yeah. I mean, I know of Jill yeah, Sharp. Yeah, if I you're Instagrammers, you definitely know her. She is a stylist, but truly a designer. Like, what's the difference in a lot of ways? I think she has like 19,000 followers followers on IG. She sure does. She has got it going on. She's a rock star and she's worthy. She's worthy. There are some with that many followers and many, many more who that aren't worthy. No, she's worthy. The thing that I love is that she's free in her expression of creativity. So, as a stylist, she creates a lot of little vignettes. Those topiaries. Yeah, we'll get oh. to those topiaries. I okay. did show that I'm, picture I'm, is incredibly resonant. I'm going to move my, my ring over to a different finger so I don't forget to talk topiaries. Okay. Oh, okay. gotcha. We're going to talk topiaries. <laughs> we have so many things to discuss. I know. We just have way too much content. Anyway, okay. Quintessence, which is that darling duo who make the little videos yes. of all the top designers, and they went and visited her in Charleston. Recently? Yeah. Did I miss this? Of course. Yeah, you missed it. Oh, geez. Okay. It's okay. You're reading your book, Essentialism. So, <laughs> so <laughs> you have I'm erudite things you're working things out. Okay. Yeah. All right. So they went and visited her, okay. and they did this little video, which was darling, and she is incredibly talented and has ideas like growing, bursting out of her head. And she's one of those designs from the top of her head to the bottom of her toes like her boat is beautiful and then their next project is beautiful and then their topiary <gasps> situation her topiary bar thing which you can see on instagram i strive uh-huh for topiary we're gonna do it with we're gonna okay, do it for you because i need the, the thing help. that i've done she she has these cute little topiaries that she put them in great pots and then she those crusty pots i love those crusty, crusty pots. pots that's key they were like gray crusty not terracotta crusty exactly. gray crusty okay but the elevation point which we're always gunning for right is to elevate our design style is to take it up a notch take it up a notch pump it up as Dixie says pump it is she lined those little pots with their little topiaries she lined the dirt with black-eyed peas, with black beans, with tamarind pods, whatever those are, with cinnamon sticks, with oyster shells. Okay, oyster shells? That's mm-hmm. cool. Mm-hmm. That's particularly cool for our part right? of the country. The Northwest? The Pacific Northwest and the oyster shells. shells in the pots. So basically, she has the topiaries. I saw the one that had the black beans and the lemons. No, they were lime. They're they were little, lime. They're yeah, lime. little limes, but you she could do kumquats. Mm-hmm. Oh, I love lines. the oyster shells because you oh, could do no. those. You could do those crushed. Is yep. that like chicken litter or something? Chicken, yeah, chicken. Chickens. Like, do they eat it or do they just walk in it? I'm not sure what they do with it. You know, I got chickens in my yard. But, I want but chickens. Well, you have neighbor chickens that neighbor come over chickens, to visit. They walk across the street and that one, they get in my yard and they root around. I'm like, who has been in the yard for crying out loud? <laughs> they got those furry feet. Yeah. That one's got the furry feet. Oh, you have the fancy chickens visiting. Oh, is that fancy? I think so. They're real cute. Really furry ones. Yeah, that they got Martha furry Stewart feet. Has. Yeah, like Martha Stewart. Oh, I got Martha Stewart chickens for You've neighbors. Got some high class chickens. They're my neighbors. You have high class. They come out every morning. They come over and root around, and you know. Then they cross back across the street. I follow on Instagram. Have chickens because I have already designed in my head the The most. Oh yeah, 
I can't wait. You, you've you already got a coop, Emma. Yeah, but I have to finish the garden first. Okay, mm-hmm. Joanna well, Gaines, we'll with your chicken up. coop and I only all want that two. fanciness. I only want two. No way. Mm-hmm. So, okay, let's go back to Jill. Okay. So, so I saw a picture on Instagram that she had all these multiple topiaries in different heights. They were in those crusty gray pots, which I was drooling over. And then the top of them had, I think, the black beans. Yeah. That we was should, so we rad. Do that. Oh, I wonder if you could do it with coffee beans. Well, you probably could. I don't know. Because I fertilize my roses with coffee grounds, so it can't be bad for it necessarily. We'll have to look well, that up. Well, that's so perfect for I'll the do Pacific some Northwest if you wanted to do coffee beans. Yeah, well, I mean, but it's the shells perfect. and the oysters, and we need to find those. I love those. the oyster Let's find idea those and, link and to the it. crushed oysters. Mm-hmm. I think that could be cool because then it gives a white grayish mm-hmm. layer on top. The black beans work. I could see those working in my particular setting. They would look great in your house. Let's do because that. Because of the black walls. Yeah. I want, I want you to help me with this. Can we order in some topiaries like from yes. the Northwest Grower or something? I'll order them in, and I'm going to prove to you okay. that you're not, no, you're not going to kill them, and you're not going to get spider mites. I promise. I swear, mm-hmm. every time I get the topiary, but what kind of topiary? You're not getting the big ivy. We're getting the little, the little what's it called? Uh, Oh, gosh, why am I such a... You all know what I'm talking about. I know the what it looks little, like. I can't... Know, myrtle. I, myrtle. Myrtle. Yes. Jeez. Okay, the myrtles. Uh-huh. Okay. We're going to do the myrtles. We'll do a little photo op, and then we'll link to some oyster shells and, and stuff. And then I get the whole, like, I don't know, I get the whole full meal deal because I get it in my house, right? Yeah, you get it in your house. I'm like, a right You're on. still going to have to work because you're going to have to move well, it around to different light sources occasionally. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you okay. can do it. Just it's going to be worth that. it. We'll just, just put it on a tray. And oh, yeah. Can, yeah. Put it on tray, mm-hmm. and then I can rotate it and the whole thing. Yeah. So, okay. anyway, she's an inspiration because I sometimes feel we're too constrained in the Northwest. We don't want to look like we're trying too hard. I know. What is it I about the Pacific know. Northwest? I mean, like, I told you that my girlfriends are like, y'all don't do your face. Then I'm like, I never do my hair. My hair's always in a ponytail. Mm-hmm. And I think part of that is me not wanting to look like I'm made up or that mm-hmm. I tried too hard. But another part of it is that I'm lazy. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say. I mean, I'm like, I yeah, you know, it's not mm-hmm. happening today. My hair, yeah. No, if I'm we had some lazy. of the culture here. Right? What? Because you're I'm, down I'm in Dallas. I'm way dressed down when I come here. I don't do my hair, and I don't really put makeup on. But then when I'm at school, I do my hair, and I put my makeup Girl, on. Girl, you're in Texas. That's why. Well, right. I know, but I'm See? just saying no one does that here. Nobody does that here. No. We're really casual. Are we au natural, or are we just kind of like, Yeah, Bleh. maybe we're just really we, dippy. No, we, I, no, here, no, no, no. Okay, here no, we go. Here it is. Back up, no, back up. No. Here we go. All right. You can't look like you're trying too hard, but you must have a point of view, stylishly. A, a style point so of view. So black and white's a point of view? Absolutely. And you always look rock. chic because you put on the great jewelry or you put on the I great— I do like me some jewelry. Your great glasses or—it's not like you don't I can't try. see without these things. That's why I got them on. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, let's I'm just— blind. <laughs> Let's just all infuse a little Jill Sharp into us. I think we should. Yeah, I think we should let go a little. I think we should have fun and start with one little vignette. She is very inspiring, and I think that I'm going to hold you to the whole, like, do a vignette mm-hmm. for me. Yeah. Let's yeah. try. Let's do it. Okay. All right. Well, I feel like we have discussed a lot, and we've gone a million different directions, and I'm hoping that you have a good week ahead of you, Lulu. And I've so Thank enjoyed you. having you with me. And Aww. I hope that school is everything that you want it to be this fall. And I'm going to miss you like mad. And I'm, I'm going to actually, you. like, coax your mother and, you know, just just hold her hand while you're gone yeah. and, and all of that stuff because she misses you dearly. But anyways. Well, I've had the best summer with you. Yay! And it's been so fun. And it's I've a win-win. Learned, I've learned so much. Oh, good. Seriously. Oh, good. <laughs> Couldn't have asked for anyone better. Oh, you're yeah. the sweetest. See, it's all true. the love. All, all the love. love. All right. We'll FaceTime you together, Lulu. Yay. Ooh, that'll be Yay. fun. On Fridays. We'll Face do it for sure. In. Okay. We'll do it for sure. Okay. Well, that's ciao for now. Ciao for now. Hey, y'all. Don't forget to follow us on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. You can also find us at designsalvation.com where we'll have the past podcasts listed as well as show notes. Hope to see you there.
I hear you munching. I, she's munching on that popcorn. Chris, I hope you can get all this popcorn noise out. <laughs> right. Anyway. Are you slurping? <laughs> I'm not sure Chris can cut that. I don't think he can. I just that. slurped my margarita. <laughs> that was a big old slurp. Okay, back to what you okay. saying. <laughs> That's funny. Mm-hmm. I don't know what I was saying. You're saying it. 